Hey everyone. Hi Aries. Um, so this thing has been happening where I want people to be here when I'm shuffling. Um, while this is happening, the moon is actually out during the day. I wonder if you can see it. Hold on. Can you see it? Oh, hold on a second. There it goes. See that little spot right there? That's the moon. Um, in a way, that's proof that we don't live on a spinning ball, which is good to know. Um, that the truth is right in front of us. That's the most important thing, right? Um, so Aries, anyone new to Opal Oracle, Opal Oracle, that was strange to say. Welcome. Anyone returning? Hi. So let's see, Aries. Just take a big old breath in and out, okay? Think about what it is that you want to know some more about. Okay. Aries, September... Okay. The clouds aren't very interesting today, but the moon there is fascinating. So, let's see here. I have river hair. I went to the beach. Well, they don't have a beach here, but they do have a river. You actually can't swim in it either. It's kind of shallow. But it feels good, you know. The sound of the water is nice something about we talked about that right water therapy okay so <clears throat> aries give me a second you're the first person to have pentacles really in their reading um So it shows me that there's some sort of physical manifestation that's actually happening for you um, during September. Now, before I begin, I want to mention, although, yes, the sun is in Virgo, um, there is a moon in Pisces, which is the opposite of Virgo, on the 26th. This should be up before then, but it's a great time to particularly being Pisces and being a full moon, a completion cycle. Um, just asking to be rid of whatever it is so that we can be more at peace with ourselves, okay? Because most of the time I sense that most of us know what it is that we, we need to release, okay? Now, I see you here excited, okay, about something new. Um, still wondering exactly like how, how to, I heard, get there. Um, I guess how it's all going to play out. That part confuses you a little bit. It, there is something about money, like about how to afford it or, um, you know, it's kind of like, well, what's the investment, right? What's the trade-off, I heard. That was a weird vehicle. Now, this came up last time, but... Um, some of you really miss your friends, okay? That's reasonable. That happens. Um, with all these eclipses and everything else that's been going on, there's a lot that can interrupt. Um, not that you're unhappy by any means, but... 
there's something you're a little bit worried about. Okay, let me see. I made these little oracle cards. They're just like a prototype. It was just my inner child playing around, like making paintbrush doodles. Um, but it felt good, you know. Let's see. What's this little page looking at? Uh, time. Okay. One more. Although that one's for both, but okay. Somebody else had this, but it's like, wake up. Sorry, Zumi. Wake up. Wake up. Whatever you're sleeping on, wake up. It's time to get up. It's time to get up. Time for school. Time for school. Time to get up. Not you, baby. Come here. I'm just kidding, Zumi. I'm talking to the I'm talking to Aries folks. Not you, baby. You can take a nap if you want to. She's so sensitive. Back in the day, she would have bolted even if I just raised my voice a little, like, out of excitement. You know, out of, like, yes. Yes. Anyway. Okay. Whatever it is that you're trying to figure out, right? I see that you need to think about it differently. Okay? You need to think about it a bit differently. Yes, you have you have you have planted a seed, right? Yes, you have um, you've put some time into something, you put some effort into something, you even rooted yourself in a way. But I feel like you're more of a house plant this has it's more of a house plant that I'm seeing versus like a tree outside. So that means that you, in a way, are in control of whatever it is that you're growing, okay? Um, and with, with indoor plants, you have to repot them, right? Or they become root-bound. And so something about, well, I heard uprooting. Um, I actually sense moving for you in some sort of way, some sort of movement, some sort of one pot to another part, but a bit, you know, you're changing pots or maybe you're, you know, when it comes to, I guess we're going to keep going with this because I keep seeing this vision, but like where there's this plant and it was in this pot and it was in this house for a really long time, right? It was in this place for a really long time. It didn't, it got used to that sunlight. It got used to the moisture in the house. It got used to everything about it, right? And now it's not only taking that plant and putting it in a bigger pot so that it can grow even more, you're actually splitting the plant in half and making one plant into two, okay? And then that one can be two into four, right? Four into eight, et cetera. Doubling, doubling, if you please. Now with that, you gotta buy soil, you gotta buy the pots, you know, you gotta figure out how much this costs. Um, you also have to be very delicate when you're separating things like that, right? That takes, you have to be delicate with that time. I see whatever this repotting, splitting, doubling, yes, it'll take a little while for it to mature. Like sometimes plants have a little bit of shock um, once that happens, right? You actually have to repot plants at certain times of the year or plants will become sort of um, dormant, right? A lot of people here now, Aries. I also see this came up before, but there's something about siblings for you, what that means, whether you have them, whether you don't, but there's something about it. Maybe it just has to do with also um, Gemini, third house, right? Which can represent a lot of things. Um, 
It can be your first steps into business in the outside world too, right? Like Taurus is like where you sort of figure out your skill set and what you're really worth and gaining that and then the confidence, right? And then you move into, and that helps with you, Aries, the sign that comes after you. You help bring that energy into Taurus so that it can, well, so that it can grow, right? Um, it's so hot. Hold on a second. Um, I know my homegirl would be upset if I did it the other way. Anyway, um, I see that your feminine side is a little bit sad. I see that your masculine side is like, okay, I'll wait a little bit, like, which is interesting because usually the feminine, I feel like is a little more patient, but I feel like there's something with what it is that you know deep inside of you that your feminine side is telling you that is making you kind of sad. But your inner child is like, hey, Aries, I need you to have fun, okay? Fun, 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 fun. I need you to have fun. Okay, it's important for you to have fun. It's important for you to, to, okay, if you get into a dark space or you start being like energetically drained or, you know, maybe you're not getting enough sunshine for you to, oh, I just noticed this too. You also got grow on the sun. That's awesome. This cute little violet. Um, you know, your inner child is growing. It's, um, it's awakening, you know, maybe that's what it is. It's like, again, you're like, wake up, time to get up. Come on, we got stuff to do. Didn't we talk about this last time too, where you're like, okay, inner child, like, I know you want to go to the park, but we got to get X, Y, and Z done, and then we have fun. Now, of course, this can be you. Of course, this can be, I feel the need to pick, like, refreshed cards. Just move this energy around a little bit. It's pretty stagnant in here. Let me get a fan. Okay, hold on a second. That's better. Um, but yeah, you gotta, the responsibilities need to be done, but you have to make sure that you have fun too. Now, fun should be productive, okay? Fun shouldn't be like partying. Wow, that's powerful. It came out like this. So this is Virgo, this is, we're in Virgo season. It's interesting, this wand behind him though. So, you're being very introspective about something. For some of you, it's whatever you're being introspective about, it's not about like sex. It's not about, you know, Virgo can be the monk. Virgo can be, obst like I heard obstinate, but um, this card came out earlier, it was in your spread, okay? That's what the that's what the hermit's looking at. So I see Aries that it's important for you to rest during September, okay? Again, you know, children grow when they when they're sleeping. So, if we're relating this to the inner child, then you need to rest, okay? You feel tired, you can take a little, little, take a little siesta, okay? I know you're a pretty active sign most of the time, you get a lot going on, but maybe you just need to take a break, okay? I see that it's important for you to go into yourself and be like, how do I feel right now? I know that, again, you got a lot going on, you're thinking, yes, 
Yep. Hold on. Look, you have, this also was on, uh, this was the 10th card that came out. So your opposite Air, uh, Aries is Libra and Libra has Saturn in the fourth house, <clears throat> which means generally speaking, which means that you have Saturn in the 10th house. The fourth house is about the father. Uh, the fourth house, sorry, is about the mother, right? The feminine, the 10th house is about the father. So this is affecting, of course, because you're the first two, well, your opposite, you know, horizon and then sunrise, sunset, this really affects the collective, okay? So you could be working through a little bit of that also. Now, <clears throat> I see that if any of you do actually have a Virgo in your life, they're like, why are you so sad? It's okay. And I know in a way that you don't want to talk about it. And I know in a way it's about your, like for a lot of you, it's about how you feel. About the way something played out. You know what I mean? the way someone treated you, it's like you're going to be reminded, this is, okay, look, all these readings are also before the full moon. Part of the reason that I'm doing this, whoever I get done and uploaded is for good reason. And a lot of the messages that I'm talking, that come up are to, so that you can watch it, even if it's unconsciously, sort of absorb that energy and then release it on that full moon, okay? which maybe I'll give extra readings this month if I have time, you know, well, maybe we'll do an early mid month or something because there's always positivity in these readings, but there's something that's like this Piscean moon wants me to tell you what it is that you need to, you know, I get a contract with Scorpio, I guess, Jupiter and Scorpio. I got a, or in Vedic astrology, I got it with Libra, you know, um, so that we can help, I, I can help, you know, whatever, help the collective release and let go. Now, I see whatever didn't work out in the past because people, you know, did whatever they did. I see this time to wake up and think about that differently, that it's, that it now is a different time. Okay? Now is not then, now is now. What are you going to do now? Okay? I see that your heart's tired of bleeding, right? You're, you're all, you're tired of thinking about it. You're tired of feeling about it, right? Whatever it is that's bothering you. I see that you're tired of it. I see there's no reason to ask why right now. I see there's no reason to ask why at all. What you need to express to yourself is, I have everything that I need. I have more than I need. I have enough to give to others. How grateful am I? You know, people only, you can't heal anybody else, okay? I told this to Virgo too, but it's important to remember, okay? You can't fix your children, you can't fix your husband, you can't fix your wife, you can't fix your ex, you can't fix your friend, you can't fix your boss, you can't even fix the chemtrails. If we could, I would, I get it. But you can't. But what you can do is check in with yourself and be like, how, why am I expending all my energy and time? Okay? Which actually, this came out in the reverse and that's good. It's fine to look back and be like check in, right? Like particularly on these full moons, right? St some feelings start to come up. 
about some things that you used to be rooted in, right? Maybe you're unrooting again, derooting. That's not even a word, but whatever. Changing pots, changing places, changing. I heard changing faces. You know, changing face. Just turn it around. You know, because introspection and, you know, Virgo season is good. The hermit is great. But most of the time, I'll, leave you, I'll let you in on a little hint. And for those of you who have Virgo strongly in your chart, um, they get stuck in their head. Because they're ruled by Mercury, you know? And it's difficult for them to come on down the mountain, right? To to actually just like have fun. You know, if you ever meet a Virgo that likes to have fun, like really like, yeah, like that kind of Virgo, then that's pretty interesting. You know, you should appreciate that. And I think what happens is when a Virgo gets cut down, for some reason I wanna express this to you, like when they get cut down or they feel like they're getting cut down or they feel stressed out, it's like, they're very logical about it though, you know? If they're not too much in their feelings. There's just a natural flow of things that are happening, okay? You know, I, I mention this also, you know, these messages, we're all part of one collective, okay? And it's important, like cancer season with all these eclipses that happened, um, all the retrogrades that happened, it's very important to understand that that energy will trickle down, okay? Trickling on down the mountain. And it's a big mountain from, here's Aries, right? How do you read it? This way. Here's Aries, up the mountain, here's Cancer, you go down the mountain, there's Libra. Okay? So, Cancer, Leo, probably there. Well, here, Leo, Virgo, and then Libra. So, we still have one quarter of the mountain to go down. So think of it that way. You're almost done. Whatever it is that you're doing. And then when you're done, you'll do a new thing. And that's great. I do see your mind being challenging though. And remember, we're all pulling off of Virgo energy. So how they feel is what the collective sort of picks up, depending on how um, energetically aware you are, okay? Of yourself, of others, etc. Now, as a note, which I don't think I even told Virgo this, but I recorded the readings, like, I think it was twice? Yeah, twice this month. So there's something about a double you know, and that makes sense with Mercury, you know, we're like double checking everything. You're almost done. Okay. But you got to be honest, Aries, about when you're actually stressed out. Don't smile through it. I mean, if you need to smile through it, grit, what do they say? Grit and smile. Fucking smash your teeth together. <laughs> Go horse bit. While you're just pulling the carriage or whatever. If you need to do that to be responsible, then sure, do that. But no one knows anything unless you tell them. Okay? People don't have time 
They don't have time to read your mind. Okay? They don't even know how. They might kind of have an idea about how you feel, but like you're not really, and you don't really talk about, well, none of the fire signs really talk about their problems at all. Um, you don't, which is a really powerful thing to be, right? Fire. And to give that example to the world, right? You and Leo specifically, like, no. But you have to. And it's not about having a cry fest. If you need to have a cry fest, you are allowed to do that, okay? But it's, it's more about just being like, calling up your friends and being like, you know, when someone says, how you doing? Don't just be like, good. Because anybody who loves you knows that when they look in your eyes that you're not, that you got things going on that you're not talking about. And that's okay too, if you really want to keep it inside. But like, what's the point of having friends then? Friends aren't, people that are just fair weather friends, it's a good way to determine whether someone's really your homegirl, your homeboy or not. They're really on your team. If they're really somebody good to date. Be completely, utterly honest all the time. Not just with your sassy shit either. <laughs> when you get sassy, you know, or when you're in a good mood. Because when Aries is in a good mood, everybody's in a good mood. Everybody's in a good mood. Aries walks, happy Aries walks into a party. It, the party's, party's popping. It's happy, you know, full of bubbles and balloons and shit. It's like exciting in there. You know, you're a wonderful energy. But that doesn't mean that you have to be that all the time. That's, that's fake and exhausting. Yeah, that's juvenile. Nobody, nobody's happy all the freaking time. Even a monk, I'm sure, gets constipated. Okay, like... I don't know where that came from, but it's true. You know what I mean? They still want to go to town and have a beer, I'm sure. Once in a while. Don't they get to do that once in a while, actually? Don't they get to get released in a way? Kind of like the Amish, you can go and like party when you're 18. This came out, oh, Uranus and Taurus in your second house. Wow, two kings, powerful. And look at this, this fire sign talking to this earth sign. Interesting. Fire sign is the one in charge, you can tell. This one's a little more passive. This is kind of aggressive, right? I see that this person's definitely a bit more tangled up. This one's definitely more free. Okay? So I see take it easy when you're talking to folks. A little bit. <laughs> and also understand that everyone has their own... Like, it's about recognizing, that's the thing about your friends too, right? Or your lovers or your children or whoever it is. When people actually express how it is that they feel, well, what happens? Well, then we learn what people's sensitivities are. You know what I mean? Like, anybody that knows me, since I finally started speaking up for myself, like, it was a long time ago, but there's certain things, and like, one thing, I used to be the captain, like, the president of the anti-mayonnaise club. Like, I couldn't even have it in my refrigerator. Now, this isn't even, like, a, an emotional thing, although it did affect me emotionally, like, and physically. If I, if I saw a jar of mayonnaise back in the day in the fridge, like, when I had roommates and things, when I was younger, I, I would hide it in the back. I even threw it away a couple times. I was like, what? When I'd work in kitchens and we'd get those big, look on the bottom again. Those big old buckets would make me vomit. But now I can be, I'm grown up and I can be like, okay, whatever that was, it's, it's kind of gone. But no one would make me a mayonnaise sandwich because I expressed that I just don't like it. Now, I'm not saying that you don't have an issue with expressing what it is that you don't want. But there's a big difference between that, expressing what it is that you don't want and expressing what it is when you don't feel good. Okay. And how sometimes that 
messes with your communication because you're learning a lot. Saturn in your 10th house, your opposite Libra in the, Saturn in the fourth house. That's a hardcore line, okay? You're helping the whole collective heal their, their BS from their parents. Now, of course, each individual person has to go through this, but if the collective is open, and hopefully at this time it seems like a lot of folks, at least that come, that find Opal Oracle, are like open to being like, okay, yeah, I do need to fix that. It's so that I can just release myself from it's too heavy, you know? And I know it doesn't feel good to cry whenever it is or like when, when you don't feel good. But sometimes when you, if you tell somebody, when you call somebody and be like, hey, you know, maybe you just text them and be like, again, if somebody asks you how you're doing, and you know what, this across, across the board, I guess I want to share this for everyone, especially in the States, when someone says, hey, how you doing? And someone goes, hey, hi. Like when people say, how you doing? Or how are you? It's been programmed into our culture that you don't even, that's not even a question anymore. It's a statement, okay? It's like a exchange for hello, but that's not the case. When someone actually, I started doing this exercise too, and it's fascinating. When someone, and I didn't give a shit if I was like, in the grocery store, you know, at the DMV, I didn't care, wherever I was at a party, someone would be like, hey, how you doing? And I'd be like, I don't know, I'm having a pretty weird day, you know? I've been feeling like, it's like energy is draining me. You ever feel like that? Like out of nowhere? And then it starts a whole conversation, and because of that, you were kind of releasing it, you know, maybe you don't have, again, it doesn't have to be like a cry ball fest, baby fest, but it can be just talking about how you feel, it's totally fine, Ain't anybody gonna judge you, Aries? Women of Rama Wolves by Clarissa Estes. Let's see, I love this book, Aries. Wow. Okay, I guess I gotta read this to you. Hold on. All right, I guess you get the whole thing because this seems to be important for somebody needs to hear this. Wait, let me ask because it's kind of, it is specific. Okay. See, sometimes the first thing that you see is not what it is. You got to double check. <clears throat> okay. It says, in this stage of initiation, a woman is harassed. Well, a person is harassed by the petty demands of her psyche which, and it's speaking in hers, but I'll change it to being unisex, but it's for everyone. <clears throat> in this stage of initiation, a person is harassed by the petty demands of their psyche, which exhort to comply with whatever one wishes. Compliance causes a shocking realization that must be registered by all people. That is, to be ourselves causes us to be exiled by many others, right? You actually say how you feel, and then someone cuts you out. Because even though you're okay with that in a way, I sense that you want the friends, you know what I mean? There's something about that. Yet to comply with what others want causes us to be exiled from ourselves. Let's read that again. Compliance causes a shocking realization that must be registered. That is, to be ourselves causes us to be exiled by many others. And yet to comply with what others want 
causes us to be exiled from ourselves. It is a tormenting tension and must be borne, but the choice is clear. In this story specifically, I haven't read this one. It's about, it's uh, Vasilisa, which I feel like is kind of like a Cinderella story where she has like step parents that don't like her. Like she's like the black sheep or the random child that sort of feels, well, exiled from the family, right? In some sort of way you know, the stranger in the family, but utterly connected to it, right? Because they don't feel, you don't want to disappoint. But you can't, you know? Because then again, you're exiling yourself and you're not allowed to do that anymore. You're awesome. You're so awesome. You can't comply with what everybody else needs. You have to ask yourself what it is that you need. And then apply that in your life accordingly so that you can get what it is that you want. Se vuole. What do you want? See that Pisces full moon, you really ought to ask for releasing yourself from any kind of karmic situations, okay? that are blocking you from the ultimate success of what it is that you want. You have to know what it is that you want and what it is that you need to release. But, you know, you can always put that in a general sense, you know? It's good if you're specific because that means that you've done the work. If you're vague, then it can do all sorts of things. So it's kind of important to, again, it's about, it's testing you, right? Like. Have you put in the work to what it is that you want to get rid of, you know? So that you can, again, get what it is that you want. Want to see the moon now before we go? Is it still there? Did the moon disappear? Oh, there it is. Look how bright it is now. Oh, shucks. There we go. It's full and maybe, I think it's four days. That's the emperor, that's you. All right, take care of yourself. I'll see you mid-month. Okie dokie, Smokey. Peace out.